Okay, chapter 166 in Hartford, Connecticut. It's another Kit Project road trip, this time back to Mark Welch, who's uh, put together a pretty nice RV-10 here. And uh, in a previous video on this channel, we spent some time with Mark as he powered up his avionics for the first time and uh, sort of brought this airplane to life. But another milestone in the making here is uh, powering up this engine for the first time. And uh, when we powered up those avionics, Mark was still waiting for his uh, Lycoming 540 engine. It's finally arrived and he's got it on the airplane. And in this video, he's gonna tell us uh, just what it take to get this thing ready for engine start and uh, here's a little hint. It's not just a matter of hitting the starter button. Well, since the uh, last time we talked, uh, we had fired up the avionics and uh, things were going very well on that, but I was waiting for an engine. Finally, uh, from, with Larry's help, uh, the engine arrived in February and I've spent probably most of my time between February and September putting all the components onto the engine itself. Obviously when you get the engine, it's the core and you have to put on things like the governor and all the various other components, the exhaust system, uh, the, the wiring, all the cabling, you know, the, everything else to make the engine run. So I spent uh, the better part of that time putting all that together. So finally, uh, at the end of September, I had all that complete and I had the engine mounted and I couldn't do much else at the house because the next thing was to put the wings on. So um, basically we got to bring it to the airport. So I think it was the uh, last week of September. Um, we, uh, I ended up uh, renting a, uh, or having a moving company uh, that does commercial moving of trucks and so forth come. They bought a huge 30 by uh, eight foot bed, articulating bed. Uh, they pulled the entire fuselage on, the wings uh, still in their wing cradles and all the other components onto the one thing and drove it down here. So that was quite an exciting adventure. Uh, so what I've done over the last month is uh, in put the wings on, put all the other control surfaces on and uh, the prop and everything. And we got to a point today where uh, we're ready to start the engine because we're just, you know, we're coming to the end of the, the build itself. So we uh, started out this morning uh, and of course uh, we had a couple glitches. Uh, I had uh, misunderstood what oil I should be putting in the, the uh, engine. So we had to go back and put the right oil engine, drain it all out, putting it all back in, even in the oil cooler. And then uh, we had to pre-oil the engine, uh, which means you pull the spark plugs out and um, turn it over so that you get oil through all the systems and stuff and check the pressure. That's, that's a key thing that you have to make sure the, the line to the oil pressure sensor is full of oil. So you have to add a fitting and drain it out there and stuff. Uh, once we did that and we were sure we had oil pressure and uh, that everything was moving, um, we closed it up, put the spark plugs back in, and uh, then we did a little fuel test to make sure the fuel was going. Actually, I think we found a leak there, so we had to tighten the fitting up. And again, once all that was done, uh, we did our first run. To my great uh, pleasure and success, uh, we, the engine started and is running very well. Uh, so we started to put it through its paces uh, and the first thing we did is try to um, move the prop governor and we discovered that there's something going on there and we've kind of determined that uh, it's probably the fact that uh, I ordered this propeller and it's been sitting around for almost two years before it went on the engine and some of the internal components could have uh, you know the some of the oils could have gelled or whatever may have happened so I'm gonna pull the prop off and the governor and I'm gonna take it to a shop to have them look through it and stuff uh, to make sure everything's right but as far as the actual engine start and running, it seems like all everything's working, all the sensors are working, we're getting good RPM, uh, the brakes held, so uh, you know it's been a, a very successful day. So to expand on that uh, issue with the oil, uh, basically I had been advised uh, looking at the, in, in the information that I had available for the, the break-in to use a um, uh, you know, like an Aeroshell 100 uh, that had no um, uh, detergents and stuff in it, I guess, uh, uh, for your original break-in period. So that's what I bought and I had put in there. But uh, again, I started the engine. Uh, I had uh, one of the local mechanics here to, to assist me and so forth. And he said, that's eh, not what Lycoming wants. And he uh, went back to a shop and came up with a service bulletin 1409-C that basically says you should use a specific type of oil with an oil additive. So we switched to a Phillips 66 Type M uh, and then we put in this uh, specific Lycoming um, engine additive to, for the break-in period and stuff. So this is um, an FYI for anybody else uh, that's uh, starting and breaking in a new engine. 
obviously with the engines, uh, you get it from Lycoming, it's uh, been assembled, and in my case, a Thunderbolt engine's been a uh, test run, but it doesn't have all the components that you have on it. It doesn't have the prop or the prop governor and stuff like that, they have their own stuff. So you typically will need to make adjustments like to the idle and so forth, and in our case, that's what happened. Um, we ran it originally. Uh, everything is reading well on the Garmin system. Again, it's a, it's a terrific unit. It has all the sensors and they're all up and running. But our, uh, our, our idle RPM was, only, was about 1,000, a little over 1,000, which is a bit high for that. So we had to adjust that down and we got it down to about 600. Uh, but other than that, uh, everything seemed to be working well and uh, we just have to figure out this uh, prop governor and prop uh, issue. Yeah. So a couple other things that uh, are of note, um, and this, again, this mechanic was very helpful in, uh, in suggesting this. He says, now that we've run the engine, uh, got it started, went up, uh, you know, to, uh, ran it up and down a couple times to get things uh, moving, is to do a compression check just to make sure, you know, that everything is set. It's, uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's only going to take us about 10, 15 minutes to do this, pull the plugs, do it for each cylinder, but it gives you a, a level of confidence that, you know, okay, something hasn't gone wrong with one of the cylinders before you do like a first flight, so we're going to do that this afternoon so uh, where do we go from here uh, basically once we get this prop issue solved and so forth and the engines running uh, with everything else done the control surface is all working and ready to go I'm ready to get the plane certified uh, so what the, that process again is, is, is another endeavor you have to go up on the FAA website and submit a series of forms and so forth the testing that you built the plane and, and things like that you also have to come up what's called the phase one test area phase one flight test area and in our particular case we're out here at Hartford Brainerd and we have a lot of urban area around us and you're not supposed to fly over that so uh, it took some back and forth between myself and the FAA to come up with a flight area that I can work within to get this um, you know, plane tested or through the phase one flight testing. The EAA has just come out with a new version of their uh, test manual. Uh, they've had, a, had one for years, but uh, there was new regulations that were put in place uh, that allow you to do specific uh, tests uh, very, um, throughout the flight. Uh, profiles so that uh, you, you you determine the um, parameters of the plane and you can put it in your POH and stuff. So I just uh, got this from, in fact, it just came out, I think, uh, the end of September or beginning of October, um, which is a task-based uh, process to go through your flight testing. And as a matter of fact, the other day we did the, uh, the first item on it, which is card A, which is the fuel flow test. Uh, again, there's, a, there's both a manual that gives you information on how to do, go about it, as well as a, these test cards which you fill out to um, you know, uh, prove that you have completed those tasks. And we did just what it said. Uh, you put the uh, plane at a kind of flight attitude, you pull the, um, the tail down in the case of the RV-10 as much as you can, and then you run a f uh, fuel flow test on the tanks, and then you record the results, and it has to be like 150% of the, um, the, you know, the fuel flow that you need for the, for the plane. So uh, we'll be moving on from there to um, weight and balance and uh, complete the pre-flight ones. And then once that's done, uh, we uh, get the inspector in for the inspection and then we can start the flight testing.